So my experiment, I was a bit embarrassed about it because it's not very scientific to experiment on yourself. It's, it's too subjective and we're trying, as I said, we're trying to use a scientific method which is reproducible objectivity, if you like. Um, I did take a few safety precautions. So I made sure that I was taking an antibiotic sensitive bacteria. So fingers crossed, I could have eradicated it if I developed an ulcer. Uh, but really, most of the things that happened during that self-experiment were a bit of a surprise. I thought I would have no symptoms, but I was vomiting. Uh, the histology was the proof that it had actually happened. So there were some objective parts to it, which you would want to have in, in your experiment. Um, so self-experimentation uh, with an N of one, not very good science. And uh, you see, if you do something wrong and you get the wrong answer, you might go off on the wrong path just on the basis of one uh, experiment. Now, I wonder what would have happened if the bacteria didn't take. And we've subsequently find that, found that not everybody is going to be infected with a helicobacter. So if it had not infected me, uh, I probably would have put my head down for a few more years and worked harder on my animal models uh, and maybe tried a few more volunteers or something. But it would have definitely slowed down the research a lot. On the other hand, because I had done the experiment, uh, I was able to get a publication and develop a, a very strong hypothesis about Helicobacter. Um, a lot of people in the field thought it was a good experiment and went ahead and did it themselves. Uh, not all as successful as myself because I did have a, an infection only for two weeks. But I know a colleague from New Zealand, he had it for three years. He could not get rid of the bacteria. And his boss was calling me saying, Barry, help, help him get rid of this bacteria. He doesn't seem well. Uh, so good and bad.